Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. You did ask for gameplay footage. I think you have to understand just how difficult it is to commentate footage that you weren't playing. But I'm consulting very heavily with the guys that recorded this to get all the information that I need to make sure that I give you accurate info. It would be fairly horrendous if I didn't do that. So you're going to be seeing some Guardian footage right here. This is a human Guardian, and this footage is going to consist of two different weapons. It's going to be using the staff and then the hammer. The staff, as you can see, has all of its five abilities unlocked here. Weapon skills get unlocked as you use the weapon. They don't take a particularly long time to unlock in and of themselves. My staff member told me that it took about 20 minutes to unlock all five abilities for a particular weapon. However, this is needless to say beta, and as such, this can be potentially subject to change. You even get experience from mining ore, as you can see, every swing gets you experience, which is quite nice. So, the point of this video is to show just a little bit of Guardian combat, and uh, we have a wide variety of footage of different types of combat at various levels. We've got low-level stuff all the way through to the max level we were able to get in the beta, which was level 30. We actually have a lot of max-level footage in both PvP and PvE. Now, what is this all about? If you watch the UI summary, you would be aware of how basically how skills work in that in order to gain utility skills you need to actually attain skill challenges in this case we are going to deal with a fellow by the name of Sheik. i think it's Sheik. Sheik the uh, windmill king he's a giant ass rat and defeating him will give us a skill point. A certain amount of skill points can be spent to unlock the utility skills that skill six through zero as you can see at the moment this guy is he's, he's not easy, but he's not hard either. I mean, we're beating on him with several different people, so it's really not too big a deal. And you'll also notice a contribution level there. Now, apparently that is now fulfilled and you have a skill point. It doesn't seem to really tell you that. So as a result of me being extremely annoyed by him, I, I keep saying it, it's like it's me. It's not me. I'm not the one playing. We're going to throw eggs at him. You can indeed use eggs as weapons. There are a wide variety of environmental weapons here, and they actually replace your normal skill bar. So if we want to beat this guy to death with a barrel, we can actually do that. I wouldn't say that this is the most practical thing available. I'm told that it is possible to have your weapons removed to the point where you might need to actually use something in the environment. And similar to other MMOs, it's also possible to get quest items. And I hesitate to use the word quest items because it's not really an accurate term in the context of Guild Wars 2. But it's a very accessible term, isn't it? It's a very obvious term. If I say quest, then you know what I mean. But questing in the traditional sense doesn't really exist so much in this game. There's personal story and there's dynamic events. Personal story is more akin to traditional questing. Dynamic events, very much not so. I must also point out that you can acquire skill points via leveling up as well. You don't have to go and do all of these events to get skill points exclusively, but you will have to do it in order to gain access to this stuff, or at least the widest variety of skills available. All right, so what do these abilities do? More to the point. All right, so we're using something right here called Wave of Wrath, which is quite wrathful, and it is a conal AoE effect with a short AoE range. That is your standard spammy attack. You can... Whack that button and do damage to enemies in a cone. Not all weapons do this. The normal sized weapons generally don't. The big weapons pretty much always do. So big swings from big weapons like the great sword, the physical form of it, will actually hit multiple opponents, which it will be interesting to see whether or not they can actually balance that, I have to say. Most skills are also not auto lock on either. They have to be aimed. You might notice right there that we put down another skill. That is the uh, line of warding. And it's an impassable barrier. You cannot get through the line of warding. And this is what you can use to not so much kite your enemy, but pretty much stop him from coming at you. But the effect is the same. I'm going to go take on this Etin right here and show you a few other things. There you go, there's an Orb of Light. The Orb of Light is a slow-moving projectile that passes through enemies and you can detonate it at a specific time. That will cause a blind effect to the enemy that you hit. So as you can see, the staff so far is an interesting mix of utility and area of effect damage. Don't worry about world versus world. We will talk about that in a future video. Yes, of course, we filmed an awful lot of it. 
All right, so let's slap him around just a little bit more. You might have noticed that our skill three is on cooldown. What is skill three? That is symbol of swiftness. Symbol of swiftness is a targeted AOE that does damage, but also increases your speed while you're inside it. This is kind of vital, actually, and I don't think that people have really realized perhaps just how this kind of combat varies from your traditional MMO. This is highly mobile combat, highly mobile combat. And the point is that you're supposed to not get hit by everything. In World of Warcraft, which is a good example, and in most traditional MMOs, you sit there being beaten on. And you might have heard that, oh, the Holy Trinity is gone, and the tanking, healing, DPS trifecta is pretty much removed. And for the most part, that seems to be the case. The point is that if there's damage coming your way, you're supposed to get the hell out of the way of it. Reminds me very much of raids, like certainly the later raids in WoW. There's certain abilities you just have to get out of the way of. But in this game, it's not just that. It's pretty much everywhere. It's in PvE, it's in PvP at all levels. And as a result, you can avoid a lot of the damage that's coming in at you by using certain abilities, including dodge. Every class has dodge. You'll even see it in the corner. It's got an energy bar next to it. And that is going to allow you to evade pretty much any attack, as far as I can tell. You can duck out of an AoE and you don't take damage. You become immune while the dodge animation is in effect. You might notice in other videos from other commentators and so on and so forth and press organizations that they're not really using that all that much. I don't say I really blame them because it is quite a new thing. I recall in my alpha footage I wasn't dodging all that much unless I had a dev next to me reminding me to do it. Thankfully, Frank, who recorded some of this, gets the hang of it fairly rapidly. This is some low-level stuff, so you're not going to see too much of it, but you will still see some of it. You're going to see quite a lot in PvP, because, well, why the hell would you not dodge in PvP? You can evade attacks, arrows coming at you, someone shooting you. This isn't like World of Warcraft, when arrow basically homes in on you, regardless of where you are. You dodge, it doesn't hit you. It's just as simple as that. You can flat-out avoid damage, and you can do it with every single class. Now, to make matters even more interesting, the Guardian has an ability right there that you might see on the arm. It's basically an Aegis, and what this does is every X number of seconds, it blocks an attack straight up, and then it recharges and it does it again. But that's not all. You can actually basically pop it. It's kind of like the old Seals and Judgment system from Paladins in WoW, if you recall how things like that worked. I honestly can't remember how they work right now in the Cataclysm era because, well, I just don't play Paladins, so... The, the system is fairly similar, though, as far as I know, which is the case of you use the shield to give a buff to your surrounding allies. So you can basically pop the Aegis, get rid of it, and in return, you gain a boost. And that happens with everything here. The three abilities that you see there on F1, F2, and F3. And as far as I know, every class has got something similar to this. The Elementalist, for instance, as you may have noticed. Sorry, we're about to hit someone with a stick. But yes, you can do it. The Elementalist can change between one of four elemental attunements and doing so allows access to different skills and also gives you various buffs. You de it's designed for you to rotate through the skills. That is deliberate. Now, I haven't mentioned the final skill here before I go on to show you a little bit of hammer action, which is Martyr. Martyr involves taking debuffs you know, bad conditions off of your allies. It puts them on you, and then it grants you a bunch of buffs and all sorts of great stuff for doing so. So that's pretty neat. That's what the staff lets you do. So overall, it is a... Uh, it's a difficult one to describe because it's got quite a lot of flexibility there. It doesn't give you a huge amount of range. It's sort of a short to medium ranged weapon with quite a bit of AoE capability. The orb and the wave that you saw there, both uh, some fairly hefty AoE as well as the symbol of swiftness. In fact, actually, come to think of it, every ability on the staff is actually AoE, just not in the same kind of way. Even Martyr is, because Martyr is taking debuffs and conditions away from your nearby allies. And then you've got, of course, Wave, which is a wave. And then you've got the Orb, which moves forward with the explosion. You've got the symbol on the ground, which is a circle. And then you've got the Line, which is, needless to say, also a line. I'm pretty sure you can figure that one out. You can see we can get some nice little bits of damage on this boar. 
And uh, honestly, the boar isn't really much of a threat. So dodging out of the way of that one boar hit for 20 damage is fairly pointless. But with larger creatures, you're probably going to want to get away from that. I'm sorry, that's a veteran boar. And how the hell can you become a veteran boar? Someone please explain that to me. Uh, could you explain to me the boar chain of command? What the hell's going on there? Yes, it is a veteran dire boar for, for the moments when dire is just simply not a good enough adjective. Yes, that, that scares the crap out of me. Those guys actually hit pretty hard, as I think you've figured out right there. So you want to be a little bit careful with your protection and so on and so forth. All right, so you've seen what the staff is. A mixed short to medium range AoE weapon with a variety of useful support functionality. And that is, of course, with the Guardian. It is not the same with every class. Not at all. You know what? I don't think we've shown something challenging enough, honestly. I feel uh, it's very easy just to beat down boars. That's not particularly impressive. So let's find something a little stompier. So in our mission to further infiltrate the boar chain of command, I was able to discover this fellow right here that took me into the woods. Don't ever follow people that you find in the bar into the woods because they will locate giant sodding boars. This is a champion giant boar. It's not just the giant boar. This thing has got medals and shiz. This is high rank in the boar hierarchy. That I can guarantee. Suddenly covered in particle effects. Yes. I think they might have slightly overdone the fire. Like, as in the amount of fire that boar is currently on should be setting every tree in the immediate vicinity ablaze. The, this, they might need to tone that down somewhat because this game looks quite silly when they throw so many particle effects at you. It can really obscure your point of view. But there you go, a, a champion giant boar. That is an event. And as you see, we've got gold participation rating there because we just kicked the crap out of that thing. Oh, yeah. So lots of damage, lots of buffs and debuffing going on, and so on and so forth. Pretty good weapon, as far as I'm concerned. Pretty damn good weapon. All right, hammer time. No, I think I'm going to show a wasp instead. So this one's a little bit trickier. That is a champion wasp queen over there, this giant-ass wasp that you can fight as part of an event, which is what we're currently doing. This one's a little tricky because she does summon a lot of other evil little creatures all over the place. <laughs> As you can see, there's just stuff flying everywhere. We've got a bunch of wasps coming in. Now, champion basically means in World of Warcraft terms, elite. Yeah, As in, you probably shouldn't be killing this solo. Maybe it's possible depending on what it is. I certainly wouldn't want to fight this solo because it summons all sorts of crap. But perhaps certain ones that don't really have a lot of summoning abilities and stuff like that, you might be able to pull off. But I'm certainly not guaranteeing it, so it's wise not to try. This is designed with groups in mind, but bear in mind that you don't really have to group up for this stuff. If you're in an area, then you will gain contribution points and so on for actually getting involved in this kind of stuff. Pretty much all the dynamic events work this way. You walk into an area, you then gain access to the event, regardless of where it happens to be in its progress, and then you contribute to that event, and you get rewarded for it. It's really that simple. These guys are actually in a group, which makes organization a little bit easier, but aside from that, we're just gonna kick the snot out of that wasp, and down it will go. All sorted. And you'll notice it didn't take any damage there because, well, the wasp was more interested in others, as you could very clearly see. All right. I promised you hammer. I shall give you just that. All right. Smashy, smashy time. This is the hammer. And as you can see, it's got quite the swing on it. This has a chain, and this is something that you will find in a lot of melee weapons. One is to assume that that's to make melee weapons worthwhile. You might think, well... Wow, I can get a ranged weapon that does tons of AoE and all sorts of stuff. Why would I want to use a melee weapon and get in range of actually getting hit? Well, some of these are really powerful, including the hammer, which can, of course, hit multiple opponents. So you've got a three-chain hit combo thingy. That's the technical terms, and I'll stick to it. And the final attack in the chain is an AoE slam onto the ground. And it is called, rather unoriginally and uninspiringly, Hammer Swing, which is... Needless to say, rather descriptive of what it actually does. Oh, wow, ruined grapes. I remember picking these damn things. Didn't we pick these in Northshire? <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of... Uh, oh, God, I don't want to remember that. Anyway. Apparently, you... Can you attack with grapes? It... 
okay. Right, grapes are a weapon. This is now confirmed. I am just checking with my staff here. The way I'm recording this, by the way, I just want to be absolutely honest, because obviously you know I wasn't playing this, yeah? So the way I figured out, the best way to actually record these videos is that my staff on Skype with me able to provide feedback as I commentate with screen sharing on so they can see what I'm seeing on my production screen, and so on and so forth. You can apparently use grapes as a weapon. If we don't have footage of this somewhere, I'm going to be very, very upset. It looks like our cameraman was being far... Far too diligent in actually completing the event and not beating people around the head with grapes. Anyone that watched my Vindictus live stream will be entirely aware of my desire to beat the hell out of people with unusual objects, including the fallen corpse of my friends. What can I say? I'm a little bit twisted. If I'm totally honest, a lot of these environmental weapons are pretty pointless. You might have noticed the stick we grabbed earlier. It pretty much broke on the first swing. And no, it doesn't do more damage than a big-ass hammer. So, a lot of it, it's kind of there for comedy relief, I suppose. The system is in the game, so they decided, hey, wouldn't it be cool if the items you can pick up could also be used to slap people about a bit, even if, of course, they happen to be grapes? Well, yeah. They've put it in there, and it's useful in certain scenarios, and it is no doubt essential in many more, but not here. It's kind of neat that it's there, though, isn't it? It really is kind of cool. There are moments where you will find uses for environmental weapons, including, say, boulders in ranged boss fights and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for useful environmental weapons and, of course, completely useless environmental weapons. In fact, if there are not PvP areas where I can pick up eggs and throw them at people, then I'm going to be highly disappointed. All right, I wanted to show you the rest of what's available with the hammer, so let us do just that. So... What is number two? Number two is a mighty blow. It's a big AoE ground slam. This can, like many other things, be comboed, but I don't really want to talk about cross-class combinations just yet. I say cross-class, and now the Guild Wars guys are after me once again. You used the wrong terminology! Cross-profession. Cross-profession. You're going to hear a lot of generic terminology that I've picked up over the last six years of playing WoW and a couple of other MMOs and MUDs and stuff like that, so just you're just going to have to get used to it. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about the combo system right now because it can get pretty damn complex, but you'll have seen some examples of it earlier in this video, but it won't have been entirely obvious what it did. And that's kind of the problem with the system, honestly. It's not entirely obvious what the effect of some of these things actually are. So we'll try and cover it in more detail later. All right, so smashy smashy time. Number two, big AOE ground slam, as you can see right there. Holy crap, the particle effect. This, I really hope they resolve this, actually, because I see this as being a big issue, especially in dungeons. The amount of particle effects that are going off is absolutely absurd. There is no need at all, and it really does obscure what's happening. That's something I... Should hope that they actually reduce. Anyway, to carry on, the Guardian is kind of defensive and likes to deal with buffs and debuffs, which are known as conditions in this particular game. And number three is an ability which allows you to purge, as you just saw right there, big AoE fiery thingy, which allows you to purge conditions, up to five conditions cleansed from nearby allies. Not only that, but since, of course, it is a gigantic sodding ring of fire, it does indeed set enemies on fire within a particular range. You'll also notice that I brought a friend right there in the form of that big-ass spiritual hammer. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit later. All right, Banish. What's Banish all about? Banish is a big set of knockdown. So you knock down an opponent kind of like that. That's not really so much a knockdown as a punt. That's pretty much a punt. So we just punted a centaur about 30 meters that way, which is awesome, I think. Yep, I'm pretty sure that's the scientific definition of awesome. And that's a damage as well. And last but by no means least, once again, another defensive ability, because that's what the Guardian is focused on, regardless of what weapon he happens to be using. Ring of Warding. It's an AoE line of defense. Enemies can't cross it, and they're trapped within it if caught. So it's like line of warding, only potentially it's got a little bit more utility to it, because you can trap people within it as well as, of course, keep people outside of it. But... There are limited uses to that as a result of being unable to hit something at a distance with the hammer. The hammer doesn't have a ranged attack, as you can see. You have to get within melee range to actually use it. 
All right, so that's a look at the Guardian with a couple of different weapons. There are lots of weapons in this game. Lots and lots of different weapons. So there's an awful lot to show you. And no doubt I will get the opportunity to do so over the coming weeks and possibly even months. And I think it is going to be months. The coverage of this game will be in-depth. Very, very in-depth indeed. Now, the ultimate challenge. We fought champion giant boars. We fought champion queen wasps. Now you must battle this wooden weapons rack. The ultimate opponent within this particular game. As you can see, the wooden weapons rack takes basically no damage, even from your mightiest hammer swings. Two guys with giant hammers, magically imbued with the power of the old gods. Flame, mighty impact, particle effects that cover the screen. Does it care? It gives not a single metric sh it's as simple as that. <laughs> it's a problem with the scaling. Weapons racks actually scale in HP due to the number of people in an area because of how dynamic events actually work, which means that blowing up a weapon rack can actually take longer than most bosses. That's something that's going to be fixed, needless to say. But there you go. The ultimate opponent in your battle for supremacy. My name's been Total Biscuit. I'll see you next time.